welcome back. Today is episode 30. 30 episodes of The Alex Steele Show. What an incredible time it has been doing all these live shows. Thank you so much for joining us again. I'm really excited. Today's episode is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to make a bottle opener. So I'm going to start with probably some three quarter by quarter inch material. And uh, you'll notice that we got a little bored of our normal location. I got a little bored of the workshop. I thought that we should we should go somewhere else. So Sam, you know, he's a farrier here. He's pretty, you know, he, he, he travels a lot and he sees a lot of cool places. He saw this abandoned, look at this place, look. This incredible abandoned workshop, beautiful, incredibly picturesque. I thought this would be a much better site for the live show, so we're here. Um, I am a little nervous because, Sam, how did you get in here? I, I used my angle grinder because the lock was broken. You used an angle grinder? Well, when I say the lock was broken, I didn't have a key. Are you, this isn't like a client's house. This isn't there like, you don't know the no people idea. that own this? No. Oh. Did anybody, oh my goodness, we're live for God's sake, Sam. Did anybody, okay. Did anybody see you come in here? Only in my van, you know, down the track. Did anybody see you angle grinding? I don't know, uh, maybe. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go look outside. I'm gonna go look outside. God. Sam, 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 Sam! God damn it, Sam! The, the freaking police are on their way! Come on, get up, get up! Move it, let's go, let's go, we gotta get out of here! Let's go, let's go, go! More! Faster, faster, faster! Crap, my hammer! My hammer! Oh my god! Do you have any idea how to use this? No. A little further, a little further, a little further. Oh. Okay. Ah, man, it's hot. Did you bring the computer? Yes, it's on the plane. On the plane? Are you kidding? Okay, I'm just... Okay. Right, do you have it? You bring it? Luckily, we've got valet parking. God, bloody good. Okay, great. Right, let's go and set this up. Come over here. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, do you have it set up, Sam? We're good to go. Are we? Okay. Man, I'm, I'm really frustrated by this. God, thank God we were able to bring all this stuff with us. Right, I'm gonna put that in the fire. Um, do you want to give me a five-second countdown? Yeah. Ready? Ah, oh, man, I'm just still, I'm still pretty bummed about this. What's the internet connection like? Two G. Two G. Two G. Not even three G. You kidding me? Uh, we're in Honolulu. Honolulu? You'd think they'd have good internet in Honolulu. Anyway. anyway okay. Five, well, give me the five. Four, okay. Great. Three. Hello everybody, welcome back to episode 30 of the Alex Steele Show. It's great to have you here. We're streaming live from Honolulu in Hawaii! Woo! It's great to have you here. I, I you know, I, I figured that uh, we need a little change of scene in the workshop. And so, uh, you know, we got some, we got some palm trees, some sunshine, and it's, uh, it's great. And I now don't know my left from my right. If you've ever used a green screen and tried looking at yourself in a monitor, you might be a little familiar with what that is. Anyway, I'm gonna mess around and make a little bottle opener. Now, you guys have seen me make bottle openers before, certainly. Um, the reason I wanna try this is I wanna try and make it a bottle opener that'll clip into one's pocket. So I'm gonna have fun playing around with that. Thank you very much for joining me. I've taken a piece of 3 8 of an inch square material and I've flattened it out a little bit into about half of an inch by, oh, maybe 3 16 of an inch. And then I'm gonna take my slot punch and I'm gonna do a slot punch and a half, so it'll be about a inch and inch and an eighth long slot. I'm just gonna gently mark that out, get that set where I want it to get set. You know, Sam, I'm really upset by the quality of the sand here in Honolulu. <laughs> like, look at this stuff. That's just terrible. Black sand. There are probably places on Earth where black sand's a very incredible thing, aren't there? Like where it's volcanic rock or something like that, where it's got kind of, you know, ground up and you have black sand. Here in Honolulu, it just seems like it's detritus and, and dirt. It's actually very similar to the dirt that we have in Norfolk, I dare say, um, back in the UK. So I, I don't know how that happened. I don't know how we were able to get, uh, get that dirt all the way here. 
But now that it's marked out, I can hit a little harder. And that bottomed that one slot out. And that bottomed the second slot out. I'll now come into the other side. And I'm going to pop the plug out. So I'm going to lay out my hole. Lay out my hole. Anyway, how is everybody doing today? It is great to have you here. 30 episodes. That's truly unbelievable. I'm utterly thrilled that we've made it this far. Sam, when we started this live show, did you think you'd get a little bored by now? No, I knew we had bigger horizons. Bigger horizons. Oh, he's sorry. He was, when, when he speaks to me and he has his headphones on, there's a delay. <laughs> now, you were telling me about some sort of study they did or, or some... Study. It was a like, thing on a radio show they were doing, and they deliberately delayed some of the monitor in their ear. Yeah. So when they hear yourself back with a slight delay, you can start go... Start stumbling over your words. No, I think... Uh... Yeah, so pull your headphones out when you're speaking, Sam. I don't know why I put it back in the fire there, because my plug is actually kind of out of there. I don't want it hot. I'd actually rather have that cold to get the plug out. It's bottomed on the anvil. I'm going to give it one more hit. Then I can come to the edge of my hardy hole. One way of doing it. Oh, am I just off screen there? Okay, you see my hole's a little raggedy, a little nasty. I'm actually going to see if I can mess around with my drift. Too distracted from all the heat here in Honolulu. that question. Joshua Myers, that's a fantastic question. Joshua Myers asked, how do you go about making a hammer eye punch without a hammer eye punch to make the hammer eye punch? Um, well, that's actually a topic that I cover in one of my online courses called the evolution of tool making. Uh, in that online course, it goes through the entire process. I'm messing up on my uh, drift here. Go through the entire process of like starting with a hammer, a hot cut, and a sledgehammer, and making all your tools from there. But I will explain to you that the way that the way that that happens, I can get that piece to stay in the fire. I'm amazed at the quality of gas forge burners they had here in Honolulu for us oh, yeah. to use. Bloody incredible, I dare say. So what you do is you make a handheld punch. You use that handheld punch. You then make a drift, which you don't need a hammer eye punch for, and you use the drift, and you make it by hand. You hold a piece of stock between your legs, and uh, you, know, you forge your hammer eye punch that way. You put a hole in it, uh, you, know, you drift it open, you forge a taper, forge the cheeks, forge a taper, round the taper, flatten off two sides. Just the same way you would make it if you had a striker, except you do what you can to do it with just a hand hammer. So I'm now gonna take a drift, and just throw that drift in the hole. Pop it right the way through there. That's why we have a relief on the drift. I'm no longer going to be using that anymore. I'm now going to next heat be on the horn, actually, Sam. Very impressed by the videography equipment you're able to scramble on the plane, Sam. Yeah, we might be What's this piece of green sand? Oh, that's, that's the turf on the beach. That's weird turf on the beach. Right, I'm going to move that over. Great. We're in focus on that one. But yeah, well, it's great to have you here. I hope that you've all had a great week. What, are, what is the general consensus in the old YouTube land, Sam? How are people doing today? Very well. Great. When is the next hammer's order? Next hammer order is March. Are you doing it again? <laughs> he goes, when is the next hammer's order? <laughs> next hammer order is March 1st. Do you remember what time I posted that was at, Sam? It's in the evening, eight. March 1st, like 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this is gonna be a nice little skinny bottle opener. I've not made one with uh, a loop of such small diameter. Out of focus. 
Great. I'll go deal with that camera. It sure is great to know that your videography assistants are so, so willing to kind of, you know, have that get up and go to be able to, uh, you know, sort out the cameras and I make sure they're in focus. I can't fly a plane. Well, you did a pretty good job getting us here, Sam, out there, say. Oh, well, there's your problem. Now it'll be fine. Okie dokie. Back to it here. Such small material. Really? Is it when my arm comes across? Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'll fix that. I think I probably have to take one more heat. I'll fix that for the next heat. Da da da. Whoop. Okay. Great. Go. You know, Sam, I'm getting a little warm. Yeah? Yeah, I am getting a little warm. Let's see what we can do about that. What do you mean? Oh God! Not that warm. Put it back. Put it back. Where's it? I think 1911. Oh look! That's Brian Brazil and Lyle Win. Who's that? Who's that little? Chimney sweep in the middle. Do you know who that is, Sam? No idea. No idea. No, I don't know either. Okay. So now my bottle opener's forged. The little loop is forged. I'm now going to size it to the right size, and I'm going to do that using a, a drift over a one-inch plate in the uh, in the anvil. Sorry, a one-inch hole in a plate in the dialer hole on the anvil. I'm gonna take a drift. We're just gonna size it to that one inch. That makes it just right for opening up a bottle. Opening up a bottle indeed. What's going on in YouTube land, guys? Uh, what's your thoughts on charcoal as a fuel and what recommendations on wood type would be? Uh, what are my thoughts on charcoal as a fuel and what my recommendations on wood type would be? Um, I'll be honest, I haven't used a lot of charcoal as a fuel, um, so I don't have a lot of recommendations. My thinking, is that one wants hardwood charcoal. Uh, and my thoughts on charcoal are there's a little bit of a reason as to why I've never used charcoal. And that's because you have to, you go through significant volumes of charcoal for the same heat as you would for, uh, for coke, and coke or coal. You know, so it seems a little easier to use you know, something like coke or coal that people have you know, been deciding to forge with for quite a while. So I would really tend to recommend sticking with coke or coal as opposed to charcoal. Um, and of course, as you guys are all aware from my wonderfully provocative video um, where I wore some fantastic swimming shorts, might I add. Uh, there are some great red swimming shorts. Uh, I, I, I'm personally much more fond of gas forges, um, which is not the way that I thought originally. I, I, was, I was one of those downers on gas forges until I started using a gas forge and I realized that everybody that had ever said that gas forges were great was correct and I, just as the hundreds of times that I find myself wrong in that instance, was also wrong. Now I thinned out that end portion of the bottle opener a little more than I'd like and it's kind of rolled over a little out of the diagonal. I don't like that. And give that a little fixer rooney. There we go. Great. Now we've got to make the other little bit of the bottle open. Yeah, I'm not so fond of how thin I got that little end bit there of the bottle opener. See, it's a little, little out of dimension, but I don't want to thin this out because it'll make it too large. So I'm going to live and accept that mistake and learn that I should not be so forceful in my forging. I think that needs to actually be hit a little bit over here. Bring it around, a little more centered. Okay, so 
Are you kidding? So uh, Dan came from Canada for a class. Apparently the striking anvil that he took home with him destroyed his suitcase on the way home. So Sam, I dare say, with all due respect, perhaps you, uh, you should have just let us ship it to you. Dan, I said Sam, sorry Sam, and Dan. Price of hammers. Price of hammers. Uh, price of hammers is pretty much 160 pounds upwards. Um, shipping to the US is like 17 pounds. Where am I gonna go with that? Sorry? Well, Sam, if you were a little more, uh, if you were a little more proactive, I dare say, this wouldn't be a problem. But, oh, goodness, that green sand is there again. Don't know what to do about that. Woo! Golly. Any more fun comments coming in, Sam? I need to, I, I need to, I'm gonna need to get good at gossip. I'm gonna have to become a gossip, a gossip person if you guys don't ask some interesting questions. What's that? What are we going to talk about? Ah, yes, so, so a lot of people comment on my videos and they say, Alec, I would love to see you on Forge and Fire. I think that's a great question to ask. It's a, it's a, it's a great want. It's a great show. It's brought a lot of people to the craft of blacksmithing. And I dare say I wouldn't be very surprised if a lot of people watching right now were watching blacksmithing videos in the first place because of having watched the TV show Forged in Fire. I think that what it's done for, for blacksmithing and bladesmithing, though I'm not a bladesmith, I'm a blacksmith, I'm a very budding and aspirational bladesmith. Uh, what it's done for blacksmithing and bladesmithing has been just fabulous. Bringing more people to the craft and it's wonderful. It's, it's very much showing the wider world, look, hey, look, there are people out there that still do this stuff and that still enjoy themselves being blacksmiths. I really made that little ring too thin. And anyway, a, a little while back, um, one of the ladies from the show emailed me the very day after I actually emailed, you know, questioning and saying, hey, do you guys uh, accept international invitations to the show? because naturally they never had done. And you know, and then the very next day, another lady contacts me asking uh, if I would be willing to apply for it. I went through all the interview processes, and of course, I believe, you know, one is, one's supposed to keep it on the down low, on the DL, uh, if you're on the show. Hence why I hadn't talked about it um, until now. And uh, I went through the interview process, and you know, I was getting ready to sign a whole host of, uh, of files they sent me, you know, uh, NDAs and stuff like that. And you know, that was over, that was pretty much over the uh, coming of the new year. And as I came into the new year, I looked at my calendar and I thought, golly, there is no way that I can do this. They were looking to do a filming uh, at around kind of, was it late April, Sam? Late April, early May, they were wanting to do the filming. And uh, yeah, kind of coming into the first couple of weeks of the month, I decided that that Firstly, there was no way that I could, in that time, get my knife making up to any sort of a standard that would be able to do very well on the show. And secondly, in that time, it would mean that I would have to take a lot of effort, effort, a lot of effort away from the video making. And as you can see just from the last month, I very much struggled to spend days focused solely on the video making, and, uh, and I knew were I to go on this show, only more of those days would occur. So I decided that uh, I would uh, cancel my application to the show, which I did, which is good, because I now feel a lot more comfortable about the coming year and how I'm managing my time and how much I can focus on the YouTube. You know, you guys will have seen me talk about in videos how my focus wants to be the YouTube videos. That's why I'm putting the focus. That's why I'm putting the focus. And that's why we came all the way out to Honolulu because we want to make some great YouTube videos, you know? We want you guys to enjoy what we're doing, so that's why we came all the way out here. 
I mean, Honolulu is a pretty long way. How long did that flight take us, Sam? I fell asleep while you were driving. Flying, not flying. I don't know. Autopilot. Autopilot? I dare say I was quite impressed. That, that little, that, 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 that big plane, that Boeing, looked like it was powered by a Cessna engine. Certainly revved it up high enough to get that thing moving. How much does one of those planes weigh? So I'm gonna mess around and put some cool designs on here. For fun, for giggles, for the giggles. Sam's beach body, somebody's just asked. Yeah. It was your brother. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that we're not going to be showing any beach bodies. Another couple of suggestions are that you should wear a green suit. I should wear a green suit. Well, I'm going to wear one of those green. Morph suits. The morph suits, yeah, with my glasses on over the top. I'm going to do that. I will order one. Where'd I put my chisel? said the plane they were flying was powered by a lot of burners. Yes, the plane was powered by lots of burners. We used about 3,000 pounds of propane to get all the way from here to, uh, to Honolulu. I'm very impressed too. If we go up to that mountain top again real fast, you're gonna see you're gonna see some howling winds coming across from the east to the west. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a, a news anchor. We really should have put up like a map of England and I could have pretended to be a news anchor. I've always wanted to be one. I, I really haven't. I dare say they have incredible skills to be able to manage their lefts and their rights when they're backwards. Or do they like invert the image that they see on the monitor perhaps? You'd think they would, that would be quite smart. My gloves catching fire. Soon gonna be at the, at the at the want of. Okay, so what you're gonna see here? <laughs> Damn it! I told you guys it was difficult. So what you're gonna see here is as the weather patterns come up through to Norfolk, where we are right there, it actually starts to be very blacksmithy, very blacksmithy weather right here. And one of the things that you'll notice. Is, uh, is that Sam does a really great job of positioning the maps on the screen. I want to go back to Honolulu, Sam. I've had enough. Do you have an image of the Bahamas? No, the, one of the other images on the, in the queue. One of them, there we go. Yeah. There we go. I was actually lying, ladies and gentlemen. That wasn't the Bahamas. That was our secondary. That was our secondary camera view. 
So, as you're gonna see, we actually have two camera angles set up showing the different angles of the beach. So if we go ahead and switch right now to the camera angle two, you're gonna see that I did it badly, I didn't make it work. I'm sad it took me so long to finally put up a green screen. Okie dokie. Great. Uh, I reckon I'm now going to cut it off and make a little belt clip. See how this works. Any fun comments rolling in, please, Sam? Uh, any fun comments? Space forging. Space forging. Download a photo, let's pull it up. Let's do a little space forging, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, where are the comments? Okay, I'm gonna cut this thing off. That ah, bumped the camera. I'm gonna be hanging out with my buddy Buzz. They dare say they used the uh, same green screen we did, didn't they? Oh, are you one of those people? No. You're just trying to get them, uh, trying to get those YouTube dislikes. Great. Nice cool, nice cool, uh, cool sea breeze is going on. Gormac Toast asks, am I thinking of making a pocket knife? I'd love to make a pocket knife. Have I ever used heat blurring? I've never used heat blurring, what is that? Why do I forge the channels into your hammers instead of leaving them as a solid block? Because it's pretty. Oh my goodness, Sam, I think, I think, you're not ready? Are you trying to move the background? Yeah. It's selecting the wrong one. No, it won't do. Right. How do you do this? Okay, guys. I don't know how to make that work. You need to find a. You need to find a. Uh... Okay, I'm sorry, guys. This is going to be great when it happens. When it happens, it's going to be great. There we go. Someone give me suggestions for what to use as a forge bro that doesn't run out of power or even ever burning up and wasting money. I'm sorry, what did you just ask? A suggestions on a forge blower, basically. A forge blower? Yeah. A, a, that doesn't run out of power. Or ever burning up and wasting money. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's inevitable that you will spend money when you're using any sort of forge burner. Um, uh oh. Added. Uh, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. I've lost it. There we go. Ah! Oh! So 
Sam, look, the zero gravity. Catch this brush. You catch it. Oh, look at that. I hit my handle first. Whoever suggested that we go on to, uh, onto a space mission. Well, it's straight out on space. The dirt is still the same. It is, and that little green patch of dirt stays there. Floating sparks is a problem. Floating sparks. Ow! There's one in my eye. Ow! Little bastard. We're having loads. That forge is out of this world. Somebody's complaining about the green screen. They don't like it. Well, guess what? I do. I love the green screen. Sam, what do you think of the green screen? I think I'm just going to leave it there permanently. I think I might have already set it on fire, actually. No, no, we're good. Can you get car hearts in the UK? I Sorry? Can you get car hearts in the UK? I know for sure, I'm a connoisseur. Can you get car hearts in the UK? Apparently, I'm a connoisseur. I actually only have car heart jackets, and they've always been from the US. I wear Wranglers, which in the UK cost like 100 bucks. Um, so I either get them in the US or I buy them on Amazon in the US and ship them here. And it's not that expensive either, shipping that stuff from the US to the UK. And in all honesty, for a pair of Wranglers, whatever is worth it. I'm just saying. Hashtag waiting for that Wrangler sponsorship. People are voting for pretty women. People are voting for pretty it's women. Early. Too early. Yeah, this is a family show. We've got to wait a little bit for the pretty women to come on set. make a Damascus striking anvil. Why, of course, I would happily spend hundreds of pounds and mountains of propane to make a Damascus striking anvil. So what is very no. strange is my brother was telling me about this thing on YouTube called Super Chat. Super Chat. Where someone can pay to have... Yeah, I just turned that on. Someone's just paid $10. Oh my goodness. Damascus I'm really sorry, K Boss. Thank you so much for sending us 10 bucks. I. I he wants to know where he can buy one of my Damascus hammers. Well, it's very kind that you've already sent 10 bucks, which makes me feel guilty in saying that I don't really do custom orders. Um, well, golly, I do feel bad now. What am I going to do with this? Okay. You distracted me from what I was going to do. But thank you nonetheless. So yeah, I'm not making any... I'm not really making much stuff for sale right now. I'm trying to focus on the YouTube videos. However, we are going to be doing a Damascus Hammer giveaway at how many subscribers, Sam? 50,000 subscribers. At 50,000 subscribers. We're going to be giving away a Damascus hammer. So that's going to happen. There will be a Damascus hammer given away. And in fact, tomorrow, I'm going to be making the Damascus for said hammer. And I dare say I'm awfully excited for it. 
And I don't think it's going to be a necessarily a small hammer. I, I don't think I'm going to try and skimp out and make, the, you know, make you a, a pound heavy hammer. I think I want to at least make a two and a half pounder. If not, I, Sam, let's let's sink back down to earth right about now. Woo! Oh man, my knees. Oh, ah, golly. So, yeah, I, I, I do apologize. Thank you for sending us 10 bucks, but I'm not making anything for sale very much. We haven't decided how someone, who's going to, and how they're going to win. We haven't decided how somebody's going to win the hammer. What it'll probably be is it'll be like a, right, guys, be friendly and share the video for me. And I'll probably pick it from one of the commenters. Now, of course, there's no way for me to judge whether somebody has shared the video or not. So it's going to be a question of asking people to not be a dick and actually share the video. And then leave a comment, and I'll probably just pick it from all the comments. Um, and I'll say, hey, like and comment, and I'll give it to one of the commenters once we reach the 50,000 subscribers. Um, when I announce the winner, for example. Just say thanks to KBoss. Thank you very much, KBoss. What did he just do? He sent me 50 bucks. He sent me 50 bucks? Are you kidding me? I don't think I should have allowed this thing. Woo! Thank you very much, KBoss. Richard Chapel, thank you. Golly, you guys are too kind. People keep sending us money. We might be able to upgrade you from porridge pay, Sam. Uh, well, I... We might actually spend a little money and put your porridge in the microwave if these donations keep rolling in, Sam. Okay, I'm, I've, I've been focusing so little on the forging. I'm going to take a heat without thinking about speaking. Are you kidding me, guys? More? Golly. Fides135, thank you, my friend. Good lord. Send us 10 bucks. You guys are going to need to stop interrupting me doing this. This is uh, very intrusive. Because I need to take a, a whole heat without talking. What the board said, self balances, when do you get paid? Okay, here's the deal. You can pay me a thousand bucks to go on a date with her if she looks, if you, if you pull it up, if she looks like this. Hell, you know, I'd accept like 750 bucks to go on a date with somebody that looked like this. Okay, we can, we can. Where am I going to do this? I'm probably going to bend it the other way around. Okay. Less, less, less yak yak, more whack whack. This thing's getting crusty with oxidation. I'm looking for a fuller. I'm going to find where I've got a fuller. Here's a fuller. I'm going to drive this in there, make it a little springy. God, I dare say it was good fun coming, coming to you guys from Honolulu. Sorry? 
Oh. think the next batch of t-shirts needs to be less yak yak more whack whack don't you agree Sam yeah. I need to think of some cool designs for that probably include my ridiculously stupid glasses freaking hipster glasses are you kidding me are you kidding me okay oh actually the first thing I'm going to do do you remember where I put my touch mark? Oh, I've been so distracted by, by all this beach and that attractive lady that came up on the uh, that came up behind me on the bar. We've had a pretty good uh, pretty good filming budget for this episode. We've had actresses in, even bought a plane for it. Uh oh. Sam, I don't suppose you remember where I put my touch mark last. Probably last use it when we did the striking handles. Uh oh. Sorry? Hey boss, just sent another hundred dollars. Who? Hey boss, just sent another hundred dollars. Hey boss, are you kidding me? Sorry? Hey boss. K boss, thank you. You freaking rock, man. I found it, Sam. Okay, this thing is super crusty. I put my touch mark in it. Right about here. I'm going to roll this over just a little bit. And then push it back around. What's going on, YouTubers? I don't know what that accent was. Have I lied to us all along and used the green screen to make it look like the workshop is tidy? Guys. Sam, what does my workshop really look like? After I've been in. Well, after you've been in, it really looks bad, but it's pretty nasty otherwise. Those green screens, and I... We pay a company out in China to... Uh, they do a pretty good job, you know, of editing out all the bad stuff and, and basically just dubbing in a clean workshop. I mean, it's pretty impressive stuff. It gets a little pricey, though, especially with how how messy my workshop can get. I'm gonna run and grab a welding electrode real fast. I'm just gonna weld this up, I'm joking, I'm not. I just wanna use a little piece of round stock. Um, my jokes are hilarious, aren't they? I, I, I must be the funniest person alive. I'm joking about getting a welding electrode, didn't gracious. I need to learn how to be funny, Sam. Learn how to be funny? Yeah. So I'm gonna take a little welding electrode. Ah, dropped it. Ah, dropped it again. This is, this is not boding well for, for this little attempt, okay? How about I try this? So what I'm gonna do, if you go wide again, is I'm gonna hang it on the welding electrode. Uh, oh, almost burnt myself. So Sam, how are the t-shirts coming along? Sam, if you're not aware, has been in charge of all of the wonderful t-shirts that are being sent out. Do you reckon they're all gonna be out this week? Easy. 
all be out. Well, they got finished yesterday. T-shirts were finished yesterday at the printers. Bagged up, ready to go. Half of them bagged up, ready to go. Yep. I'm hoping to get the rest done tomorrow, Monday night. Woo! I'm planning to the post office, so I don't have to take back all the parcels to the uh, post office in Morgan. I'll probably just do it in two batches, so I'm not there. Yeah, you'll, you'll be the one guy at the post office that nobody likes. Probably just show up late one day when it's kind of all settling down or something. But no, that's great. So, you know, you guys that, uh, that ordered t-shirts, they are officially... And hoodies. And hoodies. I can't wait to get myself one of those hoodies. If, one of, if any of you guys went to my website uh, during the time that those t-shirts were up there, you will have seen that the, 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 the icon, the photo, the image for the hoodies, it in fact was the same image of me stood wearing this t-shirt, and I apologize for that. But I, we didn't have one. Striking Anvil's left yesterday, didn't they? Striking Anvil's left, not the day before? No, Striking Anvil's left yesterday. A uh, big pile of strike and anvil, golly, those, all the couriers that come pick up stuff here, they love me. They absolutely love me, they don't, they absolutely hate me. However, I presume they get paid by weight, so they must do pretty well, actually, when they come make a collection of striking anvils. But I actually dropped some of them off. Um, I, went, I ran around to Parcel Force, because I, uh, it seemed a little easy, I ran around, dropped them off, and, uh, I believe I came pretty close to damaging the desk. What's going on with the burners? Something like the What's going on with the burners? The burners so were always meant to dispatch late February, weren't they? Yep, burners are being dispatched late February, probably. Um, on the listing, we put it as mid to late February. We have drained the country's supply of a large number of those fittings, um, sadly. But it's a good thing. I'm, I'm not going to say sadly, actually. I think it's a jolly good thing that we can drain the country's supply. Uh, but the inevitable result is, is that it's not going to be a mid-February thing. It's going to be a late-February thing, uh, which... We you know. may get some of them out. Uh, just all back Do you reckon you'll get some out a little some earlier? Out just from what time constraints, but they will all be out by the end of February. Right, that's the best way of looking at it. They'll all be out by the end of February. I'm going to grab a block of wood real fast, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't think I have one. Uh-oh. Try this. So that's all very exciting. Ow, my knee. Oh, ooh, ee. Oh, I ran my knee straight into the anvil. Oh, God, label, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be a normal live show if I didn't have something to complain about. Ugly ugly. I quite like that little overall shape. I'm going to open up the clip slightly. A little bit of heat to do that. Open up the clip, maybe flatten it out a little bit. Hey, you have a great day, Richard. Sorry that you can't stay any longer. At what point did I go from being self-taught to getting instruction? Or was it, what point did I decide to go from being self-taught to getting instruction? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say it was much of a decision, it was more of a necessity uh, that I needed instruction rather than, you know, I chose to get instruction because I decided that being self-taught wasn't working out. I think that instruction is an incredibly important thing. And were it not for my instruction, Sam, if you can uh, go back to the clip from a hundred years ago. The my instruction from these two gentlemen, Brian Brazil and Lyle Wynn, um, that was essential for me to... Honestly, I, I would be surprised if I was still forging where I 
had I not had instruction from these guys, because that instruction, you know, means you can have a little more fun in the workshop, enjoy yourself a little bit better, have more success, and you know, ultimately it's the backbone of my business is, is being able to forge tools, which is what I learned from Brian Brazil. You know, we're not for, we're not for learning from them. I, I wouldn't be doing any of the stuff that I was doing. I might well have gotten bored with the craft out of lack of, lack of success and lack of the small little rewards and excitements that come as you learn and, and as you, you know, you get little tidbits of information to take you to the next level. I, I, I don't know if I might have been continuing the craft. Would I have had that, that grit and determination at that young age to continue at that young age, as if I'm not still very young. Um, but would I have had that grit and determination to continue doing it? I don't know. I absolutely don't know. I certainly know that I'm very grateful to have sought instruction. I see it as a, a very important thing. I'm very grateful that all these wonderful people were so willing to share. You know, it's not just Brian Brazil and, and, and Lyle Wynn. It's also, you know, people like David Lish, who taught me how to make Damascus steel. You know, these people that would share and trade information with me, Jake Farham, all these people all around the world, Julien Puy, all these people that have been so generous with their time over the course of my, my short, little, short little blacksmithing journey. I, I, I just have tremendous, tremendous, I mean, it's, it's a tremendously satisfying, it's, it's a tremendously wonderful thing to know that, you know, people are so willing to share. And I love it, I do love it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can grab a linseed oil rag real quick. I'm getting a little warm though, Sam. I think we should. Uh, yeah, I think we should go back onto the mountaintops. Oh, well, now it's getting hot in here, let me tell you that. But um, now we definitely need to cool down. Uh, get some linseed oil. What is the difference between a blacksmith and a farrier, Sam? Uh, blacks no, farriers shoe horses and make stuff out of metal, yep. but blacksmiths can't shoe horses. Is that so? <laughs> Legally. And, mm. and in reality. Well, yeah, well, Sam once, once filmed me trying to take a shoe off a horse. I think um, I ran out of memory on my phone. I think you did run out of memory on your phone. It was a really embarrassing thing, thing for you, really. Um, it was your customer watching the whole time too? Yeah. I think she was watching. But of course, we were very much abiding by UK law and the horse was actually having the shoes taken off and they weren't, there weren't any shoes put back on. Are you still here? I mean, I, I should have probably introduced myself, but uh, my name is Alec and uh, it's, it's good to meet you. You're live though. Um, well, you're not gonna... Not very talkative. You could have got a better one. Golly, send me to jail, good lord. Yay. Sam, we're very funny here on the show, aren't we? Yes. One day, this show is going to be a very like exciting and enjoyable experience. Um, not just for for watching me, you know, make some crusty blacksmithing projects, but also I, I I think eventually I want to get to the stage where we can spend an entire Saturday prepping. Ah. Oh. You know when you just oiled something and you drop it in the dirt? I mean, I should say on the Honolulu sand or on the prison floor. Um, uh, dropping the soap. To not drop things in a prison, goodness gracious. <laughs> <sighs> You're deliberately now, that was, all, that was a deliberate drop. <laughs> we should make, we should have got a sound effect so that we can have a little as we warp through time to get to different locations. I'm gonna run and use an air compressor to blow off the dust and dirt since I've, I'm the detritus since I've dropped this on the ground. Apologies for the loud noises in three, two, one. Okay, got the dirt off of it. So I was just putting a little bit of linseed oil on there while it was still a little bit warm. Any more fun stuff coming through, Sam? Uh, people ask me about an Evo class in Florida. Oh. They've got to sort it out. They've got to sort the premises out. Yep, absolutely. If you want to do an Evo class, you've got to sort the premises out. Um, you know, all of that fun stuff. And the trouble is, of course, is you know there there are there are issues with kind of getting visas um, and stuff like that. 
So they're all things that have to be sorted out. If you're really keen on setting up an Evo class with me somewhere, uh, anywhere, oh no, anywhere in the world, you know, shoot me an email. Um, but bear in mind that you know there's a certain degree of investment required to get set up enough to do it because I'm I'm quite uh, quite picky about I've got to go back to the air compressor quite quite picky about how it is that I want to run those classes and so it requires you know getting set up with the right tools and equipment not a lot but somewhat specialized uh, to be able to do it. Ugly, ugly. It's not. It's, I don't like it being a gimmick class. I, it's. That's, that's the reason that that's really the only class that I do is because it's not a gimmick class, in my view. It's a, I think it's an important one. There are some important things about black that, that, that I speak about, and, I, and I, you know, I, I, wanna, I want it to be properly set up when we do that. Golly, lots of comments. Someone says screw has just come through Mexico. Just come straight through. I should not try and do accents live. Have I ever considered using an induction heater for forging small pieces and blades? Yes, I have absolutely considered getting There's a noise outside. Getting an induction heater. Uh, we're at Sam and I were actually speaking about that this week. Um, I might do it at some point. I'm just a little nervous because you've got to get them through China, and I'm nervous about you know getting a dodgy one. You know they come through eBay. I don't know. Maybe it's unfounded nerves. It's also because I I've used an induction heater before, and it was a lot of fun. But, uh, I, I don't know. It's basically just not been an essential thought of mine. At some point I'll get one. Though with space being an issue, not necessarily majorly, majorly excited to go and get one. What's new? What's new? Uh, did you quit school for blacksmithing? Yeah. I did quit school for blacksmithing. Well, great. Well, I'm going to just, instead of watching the comments, I'm going to try out my bottle opener. Hang on. Can what? I try it now? You've got to go back to the bar. Well, hello. I thought that uh, you seem like you're a little thirst. God, like, how, can you tr how can you be PG? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I figured you might want a bottle opener. So here you go. Now, you need to, I think you're feeding it. <laughs> <laughs> go a bit further back. Uh, let me just. Go a bit further back. Bit further back. No. Bit further. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and rest that right. Ah, oh, that didn't work. I thought that the ladder might still be in shot there where I could rest it, but it wasn't. But anyway, guys, it's been a real pleasure. Exciting making this little bottle opener, and it uh, goes right into your pocket. Someone just said, just switched on Yarmouth's change a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? That's funny, yes, Yarmouth has changed a lot. But anyway, the pocket, pocket fed bottle opener is done, and I'm quite happy with it. It's a little bit on the crusty side, I'm not pleased with that thinness there. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that, since our highly paid cameraman is uh, sat down. God, I do love insulting my friends. <clears throat> what? Nothing. Friend? Oh! oh. <laughs> That's, that's how you get your own back. See, so it's a little thinner in here than I would have liked. That was my own fault for making it a little thinner. And, uh, and yeah, I, otherwise I like, I like messing around. It looks almost a little tribal. Got my touch mark on the clip. And then if you, uh, if I, I, I think, uh, maybe I'll be able to, f if I go maybe there. Uh, uh, what are you trying uh, to? I'm trying to show off my Wrangler jeans. No, I'm not. I'm trying to show the clip. There we go. Look at that. Clips right into my pocket. That was fun. I don't think I've ever made a little pocket clip, and I might incorporate that into some future designs of things. If you ever need a little quick release, why is this sand all green again? This is this is ludicrous. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. Well, anyway, guys, I, I wish you the very best. We can go to another screen. I wish you the very best. And if you ever find yourself in a situation where there's a pretty lady on a bar that's about how tall was she? About ten feet tall. Was well, she stretched to fit? Was it stretched to fit? Yeah. So a little longer than, than otherwise. But if you ever find yourself in that situation, you need a bottle opener. I hope this video was of help because you now have a bottle opener that has two eyes uh, and has a little clips for quick access in your pocket whenever you're just really, really thirsty. And the only thing that you can do is drink a beer. It's been an absolute pleasure being here for episode 30. I really hope you've enjoyed it. We've been all around the world, which has been a very exciting thing. We've done this live show in as many continents as there are imaginable. We've done it in hot climates. We've done it in cold climates, we've done it in the space, 
We've done it in jail cells. Ah, get me out of here! And, <laughs> and, and we've done it, I can't now say the same thing because otherwise it sounds very dirty and this is a PG friendly show. We've also done it in crusty blacksmith workshops. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Thank you very much for not calling the police on us when we broke into this workshop. And I hope that you have a fantastic, fantastic day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna be making up some sick Damascus. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna have some fun playing around with it. Sick Damascus and then the day after I'm gonna be making a Damascus hammer that we're gonna give away at 50,000 subscribers. Sam, thank you so much for joining us for the show. Please wait to the camera. He's here. Guys, really appreciate it. To you guys that sent us some money too. Like I just, that feature just recently came out. Guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for your wonderful continued viewership. And I just love saying thank you. And I, I don't understand how other people that host shows are able to say goodbye so quickly because I tremendously enjoy the experience. And I am genuinely ecstatic for the fact that you guys were watching. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic day.